सर प्लीज स्टार्ट गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर्स इट्स इंडीड अ ग्रेट प्रेशर टू हैव यू ऑल दिस इवनिंग फॉर एन इंटरेस्टिंग एंड क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन which is cvd protection and yoga connect and to have a discussion and deliberation on the same it's a great honor to have the experts who have worked on this uh, area of yoga as well as in the field of cardiology and it's a great honor and great privilege to welcome our moderator for the day dr hk chopra sir who is the chief consultant cardiologist at mulchan medicity hospital Delhi, and he is also was also the president of Indian Academy of Echocardiography. He was also the president of the uh, CSA, the Cardiology Society of India, in 2015, and he is also the country head of the American Heart Association between 2015 to 2019. He, was, he is also the national chief advisor to the Tata Sky Family Channel, uh, which is again reaching out to multiple uh, households. he is also the chief editor of uh, various textbooks and the first to initiate a textbook on stemi the indian heart journal the journal of indian academy of cardiography <laughs> and so on he was also the editor of 32 books in the field of cardiology and medicine and yes uh, sir is also the president of the world heart academy and the world wellness foundation and he was also uh, awarded the icon in the field of cardiology and echocardiography by our past our, our late president dr abdul apj abdul kalam so and lot more credentials for the sake of time and to take over the day's proceedings i hand over to dr hk chopra sir over to you sir uh thank you very much johnny dear friends ladies and gentlemen it's really a great pleasure and honor indeed for me to be with you all on the occasion of a very very powerful special promising and important dialogue on yoga connect and civil deprivation this is happening for the first time in the world by a pharma company talking on cv reproduction and yoga and i am very happy that this webinar will take us to a bigger heights in the world and the personality for this is a very eminent person who needs no introduction to the audience professor sc banchanda professor sc banchanda and we are working together for last many years we have very close alliance and i respect him from the depth of my heart the way he worked he was the first man in the india a face of india and yoga to the world i will give his brief introduction in just the uh, next few minutes but before that i'll just tell you what is the theme of this program why are we doing this the theme is to understand and implement the connection between the cardiovascular protection and yoga in a very very scientific manner the agenda of this dialogue will be taken over by professor manchanda and he will talk to us about the analysis and the scientific deliberation and connection of yoga with the uh, cvd protection our academic partner today is ipka laboratories i am very happy that ipka has come forward to do this yoga because most of the people Uh, are mostly drug oriented or their product oriented here the things are going to be very very different why should we discuss this why now why not before we know that india is more of a illness country we take world capital of hypertension diabetes cad stemi and we talk of dyslipidemia or diabetes so we are only world capital of illness and here professor s c manchanda is there who will take us to a new paradigm and the paradigm is from illness to wellness so he considers i know it this is his language also he considers yoga is a wellness pill and yoga 
is also a smart CBD protection pill. He will use his own nomenclature for it. But yoga is really supreme. And when we talk of yoga, I think we'll discuss about all the eight limbs of yoga. That I leave it to him, and we'll have the conclusion. Now to introduce uh, Dr. Manchanda, it's not an easy task. It's a Herculean task. And the time given to me is only one and a half minutes to introduce him. I must tell you, he is a Padma Shri awardee, and he has been the senior consultant. Uh, he is now senior consultant, Department of Cardiology, of Gandhara Hospital. And formerly, he was the head of the Department of Cardiology in All India Institute of Medical Sciences. My alliance with him goes to almost last 35 years. His contribution in yoga is known to each and everybody in the world. He is a giant and legend in yoga uh, scientific validation from the All India Institute. I call him as Dean Arnish of India. Dean Arnish did a lot of work in the United States. He is not less than that. According to me, he is more than that because he understands much better. A recipient of various awards. The two awards are very prestigious. The iconic award in cardiology of the century in yoga. In yoga, it's not easy. It's very difficult. And he has been given two prestigious awards from CSI. National Lifetime Achievement Award to none other than our own Professor Manchanda. He was also bestowed upon a very prestigious first oration from CSI to Professor Nanchandra. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Professor S.C. Manchanda to give his presentation on yoga and CVD protection. Professor Manchanda, sir. Thank you, Dr. H.K. Chopra for your nice introduction. As you heard, today I am going to talk about the role of yoga in the prevention of heart disease. Many of you must be doing yoga, but I'm going to tell you here that we have a lot of scientific evidence these days to tell us that it could be very useful in many lifestyle diseases. And uh, my presentation uh, will be uh, through slides. Could I have the next slide, please? As you all know, non-communicable diseases are the leading cause of death throughout the world. About 70% of people throughout the world die of non-communicable diseases. Earlier, we used to have infectious diseases like the plague and other things, but these days, these non-communicable diseases have taken over. And the leading non-communicable disease is the heart disease, which uh, is the leading killer of mankind throughout the world. It is also the uh, leading cause of disability throughout the world. Every third person who dies in this uh, world dies of cardiovascular disease. And therefore, we must try to prevent it. Other diseases which are related to this are diabetes, hypertension, and several other diseases. And yoga has been found to be useful in uh, these uh, prevention of these diseases. Next slide, please. You know, a lot of uh, advancement have been done in the understanding of heart disease and several other non-communicable diseases. We know why they are caused. We know they are related to our unhealthy lifestyle. The faulty diet that we take, lack of exercise, mental stress, and tobacco are responsible. But in spite of this increasing knowledge and even awareness has increased, you can see that the disease is projected to be increasing markedly by the year 2040. For example, in many developing countries like Brazil, it will increase by more than 200%, similar in China and India. Although we are advancing uh, quite a lot uh, economically, but we are losing on the health front, all these developing countries. This uh, loss of life not only costs us a huge amount of uh, uh, loss of lives, but also uh, economically, it is uh, very damaging to any country. And why yoga is important, next. The question was being asked, why yoga is important? You see, as I said, the knowledge and the awareness about the disease, why it is caused, has really improved markedly. But the disease is not really decreased. We have a lot of advancements in the treatment of heart disease, like angioplasty, bypass, even heart transplant, etc. But in spite of all that, the incidence of heart disease is increasing. 
have we ever thought what is the reason for this? Well, there could be several reasons, but one of the main reasons is that heart disease is a multifactorial disease and lifestyle choices have great influences in which not only uh, you need the body, but also mind uh, interaction is very important. And once there is a mind-body interaction, uh, it is called a stress. And this is very prominent in choosing our lifestyle. Hence, integrated approach, including mind, body, and holistic techniques like yoga may be useful. So far, we have used techniques which only use the body language because mind has not been investigated in great details in the Western countries. Next, please. We all know that we are not only just human uh, beings, we are not only body, but we have the mind and consciousness. And this is what is described in our yoga literature, which is now accepted by many of the uh, modern uh, physicists also, that we, our existence is of five layers. The innermost layer is the kosha or the physical sheath. We all know the body, we know a lot about it. It is surrounded by something called Pranamaya Kosha for the vital sheaths. We also know the this is breathing and the uh, so-called autonomic nervous system, which controls our various organs when we are in trouble, when we are running, etc. So these two we know a lot in medicine. But the third layer is the layer of the mind or Manumaya Kosha. This is called the, uh, the mind. And there are two types of mind, the lower mind and the higher mind. The higher mind is the wisdom sheath or Vignanamaya Kosha. Now the lower mind is trying to pull us down all the time. It has all anger, enmity, uh, and uh, uh, ang anger, enmity, jealousy, etc. On the other hand, the Vignayama Kosha has uh, compassion, love. So they are trying to pull each other. And this disturbance in the mind, the lower mind says go down and the higher mind says come up. This disturbance is, causes uh, stress. And the final layer is the uh, Anandmaya Kosha, and that is the pure consciousness, that is a state of full bliss and a complete uh, uh, sort of health. In our modern medicine, we have been treating only the Anandmaya Kosha and very little of the other sheets. But if we can uh, sort of control the other sheets, all that the mind and uh, uh, the consciousness, then the disease could be controlled. And therefore, a mind-body technique like yoga may be useful. Next, please. And all of you know that there's a very strong mind, body and mind, heart interaction. If there is a uh, faulty uh, mind, if there is some disturbance in the mind, it disturbs the heart quite a bit. You have all experienced this. When we are in anger, you get so-called palpitations, you get even high blood pressure and so on. So disturbance in the mind, which uh, are responsible for stress, contributes significantly to the causation of several lifestyle-related diseases. Mechanism has also been really uh, studied how the stress can cause the disease. I'll come that, to that in a minute. And therefore, unless the inner disorder, disorder is healed, the outer uh, cure will not be complete. And therefore, yoga not only looks after the inner uh, disturbance, but also the outer disturbances. Next, please. This is a schematic diagram, how stress can affect our body and cause heart disease. You see, there's a new science, which has been called as the uh, psycho neuroimmunobiology. Whatever thoughts are, which come from the mind, uh, disturbed thought causes stress, you all know anxiety, etc. And once the, uh, uh, there's a uh, bad thought, it affects the uh, nervous system, the brain, the autonomic nervous system. And the moment it is disturbed, it releases large number of uh, hormones. This is called neurohormonal disturbances. For example, you see cortisol is released, the glu glucagon, renin, etc. All these things can cause high blood pressure. They can cause even diabetes. They can cause even uh, inflammation and so on. And uh, the, on the other hand, our autonomic nervous system gets altered. We get increased sympathetic activity. That means increased blood pressure and so on, and decrease in parasympathetic activity. This results to disturbance in the baroreceptors and also it changes the RR variability. And these two interact, the neurohormonal and the autonomic imbalance, complete, uh, they uh, change in a manner uh, and interact so that there is an inflammation and uh, oxidative stress. Ultimately, it can cause hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, even heart failure and arrhythmias 
the so-called irregular heartbeats and people have been known to die of sudden stress as you must have all heard it. So ultimately what stress is doing, it, it is changing the behavior. And unless we change the behavior of the individuals, I don't think the disease can go. People know that exercise is good, but still they don't do it. The reason is because their behavior is uh, uh, completely altered. Many of my patients, I ask them, why don't you exercise? They say, I want to exercise, but doctor, when I get up in the morning, my mind says, don't go today, uh, go tomorrow. So it's making an excuse. Similarly, when they want to take good food, they know what is good food is. The mind says, take it today, not tomorrow. So they have no control of the mind. The behavior has to be changed. And there is some evidence that behavior can be changed by yoga. I'll come to the scientific aspect of that. Next. Now, what is yoga? Yoga has been defined in many ways. You know, it has been taken from an ancient word, what is called the yuj, or to join or to yoke. It is to join the... Uh, lower nature of the human beings to the higher nature. That means the lower mind to the higher mind, that is to the consciousness mind, lower mind to the higher. It has also been said it uh, joins your uh, lower consciousness to the higher consciousness. So this is uh, a meaning of uh, joining uh, uh, our mind to the higher mind. So I would like to define in a very simple term, what is yoga? Yoga is not fear, merely a few posters or asanas, but a complete or a holistic way of life. It's a mind-body technique which aims at harmonious development of body mind leading to physical well-being, mental harmony, culminating into positive thinking, happiness and peace. And a lot of data is available that uh, uh, yoga can cause physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. Ultimately, it can calm our mind and keep us happy. Yoga should be called as a lifestyle which has four components. Next, please. <clears throat> These are the four components in a very simple term of yoga. The physical, mental, emotional and spiritual. What is the physical component? Diet. Sattvic diet is a part of uh, yoga. As you know, it has been said that Sattvic diet should be taken by yogi people. This is a vegetarian high fiber diet. Natural diet, not too much refined. And we know the advantages of this diet. This type of diet can prevent heart disease, diabetes, and blood pressure. Physical exercise is a part of yoga and many asanas also are equal to mild exercise but uh, yoga people encourage you to do exercise which we know the benefits are tremendous and no addictions like tobacco and alcohol. Many people who are addicted to tobacco and alcohol uh, can also be cured by yoga and therefore this physical component is accepted by everybody in the medical science but the mental component of Yoga is more important. That is to manage stress. And this has been shown that one of the methods of uh, yoga, that is meditation, can control stress markedly. There's a huge number of papers to show that meditation is one of the best methods for stress management. Emotional well-being has not been emphasized, but this is a very important component because yoga can control anger, ego, jealousy, hostility, and so on. And we know that all these negative emotions can cause heart disease, because as I showed you, that stress can disturb the neurohormonal and autonomic nervous system. It has been clearly shown that anger is a risk factor for heart disease. During anger, people have had even got heart attacks. People have died also. And similarly, data is available, ego, jealousy, hostility, etc., that it can increase the heart disease. And on the other hand, the positive emotions like compassion, unconditional love have been shown to decrease heart disease. There are several... Uh, uh, epidemiological studies to show that people who are compassionate, who have love, they have less heart disease and so on. And spiritual component is very important because it has been shown that people who are spiritual, they have less heart disease. They live longer and if they get the disease, they can uh, recover uh, much earlier. So uh, I think all the four components of yoga are important and this is what uh, yoga is next. Now, there are various types of yoga and one is confused which type of yoga to do. Now, uh, this yoga was described in India by Acharya Patanjali about 5,000 years earlier. It described as an eight-step discipline. And uh, uh, all these disciplines have been found to be very useful for prevention of the disease. For example, Yam Niyam, there are some personal and uh, social norms. Then 
asanas, that is a few uh, postures, comfortable postures, and how to breathe properly called pranayam. There are several types of them. And then how to control senses, the pratihara, dharana to concentrate, and then dhyan meditation. And ultimately, you can achieve a state of so-called self-realization, uh, that is samadhi. So there are three basic components of uh, yoga. One is the stretching exercises or yoga uh, or uh, asanas. The second is the uh, breathing exercises or uh, uh, pranayam. And the third is the meditation or dhyan. Now, all the three components have been shown to uh, show benefit on the cardiovascular system. For example, stretching exercises itself have been shown to reduce stress and they improve the physical fitness. There are several studies to show that uh, pranayam can uh, uh, decrease the blood pressure and also can uh, relieve stress. By pranayama, we mean that the breath becomes uh, uh, deeper. We don't use fully lungs, about use 60%. When we use diaphragmatic breathing, when we take the breath in, abdominal should come out. This abdominal breathing increases the vital capacity and also the uh, breathing rate slows. Normally, we breathe 16 to 18 times and during uh, uh, pranayama, it can come down to 8, 10 and ultimately some people can have to 4, 3 or 2 also. So, the slower the breathing, it seems that uh, uh, the mind is completely relaxed. This is quite common sense. When we are angry, the breathing is fast and when we slow it down, uh, it becomes uh, much less. And even this pranayama has been shown to even control blood pressure. The third is the meditation. This is the most important part of uh, uh, yoga. And there are a huge number of studies available on meditation. Meditation uh, is concentrating on one thing at a time and uh, thinking positive. And this can be done uh, even if you can't sit on the floor, sitting on the chair. So it is possible uh, for anybody to do this yoga. Uh, it's not uh, important what your physical condition is. I have been doing research in yoga for the last 20 years. And I had had patients 80 years, 70 years who had knee replacements who could not sit on the floor, but they did very well sitting on the chair. That's called chair yoga. And everybody can do a little bit of uh, stretching exercises, breathing, and uh, uh, meditation. Now, so many systems are there. Some have talked only of meditation. For example, there's a transcendental meditation, there's a mindfulness meditation, and uh, there is a meditation by Brahm Kumaris, also Raj Yoga. This is only meditation. And huge benefits are shown. There are some who talk more of breathing, for example, Ramdev and Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. And some people talk of uh, uh, asanas, that is the Iyengar Yoga and all. But all the three components are important. And therefore, people who have used all the three have shown uh, much more benefit. Next. So, to summarize, in very simple terms for the doctors, what is yoga? Yoga is a holistic and intensive lifestyle. Dean Ornish has called it an intensive lifestyle change, uh, which consists of stress management, healthy diet, regular exercise, and avoidance of tobacco. So, this takes care of almost all the factors which cause heart disease and other non-communicable diseases. For example, stress we know is a very important factor. Healthy diet is very important. Regular exercise is important. And avoidance of tobacco and alcohol. So I have named this tobacco, uh, this uh, 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 yoga as a lifestyle polypill. You know, we doctors have called pharmacological polypill in which we put statins, we put antihypertensives, antiplatelets, etc. But uh, uh, those uh, uh, pharmacology polypills have side effects. They, of course, cannot uh, take care of the diet. Right? They, can, they cannot take off tobacco and they can't do exercise. So lifestyle polypill seems to be covering almost all the aspects. And I'll show you the evidence that yoga could be helpful in uh, many ways, in many conditions of the heart. Next, please. Now, yoga has been shown to be extremely useful in many conditions. I will not have time to go through the details of all this. It has been shown that yoga is extremely good for control of anxiety and depression. And I will show you a lot of data and even the mechanism has been studied how it can control that. It can help you to attain mental peace and happiness. It's extremely useful for bronchial asthma. There are several studies done. Uh, physical fitness, many of these uh, athletes use this. And uh, for physical fitness also, it's useful for gastrointestinal problem, irritable bowel, and ulcerative colitis. It's extremely used for joint pains, low back pain especially, and for fatigue, etc. 
but it is very, very important for control of cardiovascular disease. Today, I'm going to talk of role of yoga in cardiovascular disease. Next. Now, what is the role of yoga in cardiovascular disease? As I said, this has been investigated scientifically in a lot of studies. And I will go through some of these studies. So studies are so convincing that even the modern medicine and the modern uh, latest uh, journals of cardiology and medicine are covering them up. And I am sure that in next few years, it will come in the mainstream medicine and cardiology. Next, please. To understand the role of yoga in cardiovascular disease, we, we must understand what cardiovascular disease is. Cardiovascular disease has been considered as a continuum. Continuum means it starts with some risk factors. We all know that there are some risk factors like high cholesterol, dyslipidemia is there. There is hypertension, there is diabetes, smoking, and psychosocial stress. These are the main risk factors for heart disease. And if they are present, the chances of heart disease increase. What do these factors do? Apart from, from increasing cholesterol, etc., they also cause inflammation. Inflammation is very important in the arteries these days. And this is considered as one of the main reasons for uh, uh, production of uh, uh, atherosclerosis or the blockage of the arteries. It also produces oxidative stress. And this, in a complicated manner, causes uh, deposition of cholesterol called atherosclerosis, which is uh, initially very, very mild, does not cause any symptoms. And after several years, when the obstruction is significant, more than 70%, it can cause angina or myocardial ischemia, and uh, which, uh, if it is not checked up, can cause myocardial infarction, which is because of rupture of plaque, etc. When a myocardial infarction occurs, it can cause uh, uh, heart failure, it can cause arrhythmias, and ultimately a person can die. Now, yoga has been shown to be effective almost at every aspect, especially the control of risk factors for heart disease. It has also been shown to be effective in other uh, steps. And if we can break this uh, continuum some anywhere, uh, the heart disease could be decreased. Let's see what the evidence is. Next, please. Now, as I said, yoga is one of the most important methods of controlling psychosocial stress. A large number of randomized studies uh, and epidemiological studies show that people who are under mental stress, they are likely to get this disease significantly. And depression has been considered, considered as a very significant risk factor. In some studies, it has been shown that depression is as important as uh, the major risk factors like smoking, etc. So psychosocial stress can be uh, significantly reduced. Large number of randomized studies and meta-analysis has shown that this can control that. Even the mechanism has been studied. It has been shown that during yoga, the neurotransmitters in the brain change. For example, the serotonin and GABA levels uh, increase uh, significantly, which are uh, significantly altered in depression. So this is a significant uh, uh, method of controlling stress. And as you know that depression after uh, any heart disease like heart failure, myocardial infarction is a uh, huge risk factor. And we have nothing for that. Uh, yoga may be extremely useful. And as I will show you in some studies show that after a uh, heart attack and after so-called heart failure, this may be useful in controlling mental stress and anxiety. Next, please. What about hypertension? As you know, hypertension is the commonest cardiovascular disease affecting every third adult. Uh, affects about 1.4 billion people throughout the world. It's a silent killer and it's a major risk factor for uh, uh, heart attacks, for kidney disease, for heart failure, and for strokes. And yoga has been found to be extremely useful in control of hypertension. Uh, the first studies were done in our country, Dr. Date in 1960s, uh, about uh, 60 years back, showed that Shavasan can reduce blood pressure. However, this was not accepted because they were not randomized studies. Since then, a large number of randomized studies, as you see here, uh, in, involving about 10,000 pe people, and these are randomized controlled studies, have shown that yoga can, next please, can consistently decrease the blood pressure. And uh, there are studies even with ambulatory blood pressure. Next. This is a study we did with ambulatory blood pressure. As you know, ambulatory blood pressure is much better than the usual blood pressure reading because there are so many 
problems this hypertension has that some people have so called high blood pressure when they come to the doctor white coat hypertension some people have high blood pressure at home that's called mast hypertension many people have increased in the blood pressure in the early morning and this can be all checked up by ambulatory blood pressure not by the usual readings now there are very few studies and we did a small study a few years back in which we took 60 subjects with the mild hypertension pre hypertension hypertension is not only a risk itself but even the high normal blood pressure between 120 to 139 and 80 to 89 diastolic is also a risk factor and uh, we found that this could significantly reduce the blood pressure in patient with pre hypertension and uh, the blood pressure uh, of course uh, uh, decrease was modest only but as you know if the whole population uh, decreases blood pressure even by 2 mm the decrease in uh, coronary heart disease can be 6% and stroke by 15% so if uh, most of the people can do yoga and decrease their blood pressure even modestly actually the studies show that systolic can come down by 5 to 10 mm systolic and diastolic by 3 to 5 mm and what we found in our study is that uh, the early rise of blood pressure that is the uh, when the heart attacks occur maximally it was uh, uh, entered by this and therefore this may be a very good method of uh, decreasing these uh, 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 blood pressure and the strokes next please next slide please now it has been clearly shown that uh, uh, because blood pressure can be controlled by this so many guidelines have come up which have shown can we have the previous slide please the previous one the effect is so consistent that american heart association scientific statement in 2013 they published in hypertension that they had a unanimous opinion that meditation a transcendental meditation which is a type of meditation has shown a consistent uh, but modest decrease in blood pressure and they suggested that it is uh, uh, advisable that all people with high normal blood pressure more than 120 and mild hypertension transcendental meditation could be used that was in 2013 next in 2017 Uh, a statement again came from american heart association again a review of literature in meditation and cardiovascular risk reduction and they also came to the conclusion that it appears that meditation is extremely useful in controlling the risk factors as well as hypertension however they said the studies uh, are not very strong and more studies are needed next recently as you know uh, last month the latest guidelines on hypertension have come these are the latest 2020 international society of hypertension guidelines just published last month and for the first time uh, this uh, huge uh, uh, society uh, recommendations have suggested yoga and meditation they have uh, taken yoga as a part of physical exercise which i will tell you is uh, it's like a mild exercise so they have suggested that uh, mild exercise uh, other types of including yoga is uh, useful for control of blood pressure they have also said stress reduction by meditation has been shown uh, to decrease the blood pressure although they say more studies are needed so it is coming in the mainstream uh, cardiology now the latest guideline mentioning for the first time that yoga and meditation could be extremely useful for control of blood pressure they are especially useful in pre hypertension i have seen patients who have a lot of stress even resistant hypertension they could be useful but we need more studies next the diabetes is another uh, uh, very important disease for indians we are the diabetic capital as dr hk tupra told you a huge number of these cases and there are again large number of randomized controlled study about 24 of them are available out of which uh, 22 have shown a positive they have shown next uh, next please they have shown that there is a consistent decrease in the hba1c or the blood sugar which is equal to uh, the drugs for example like uh, 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 the, the many drugs anti diabetic drugs also decrease the hba1c blood sugar uh, by 0.5 to 1 this uh, also shows significantly decrease in that so consistently there is a decrease not only there is a decrease there is a decrease of the body weight and the lipids are also improved and the stress is also reduced next and this is the largest study ever done 
on yoga again from India. Uh, India is taking the lead in doing this multi-central study. This is a study which was presented in uh, last year in the uh, American Diabetic Association and it won, won it was the, addressed as the best paper. And this study included more than 3,300 pre-diabetic patients uh, who were from 29 states in India. This is a huge study. See, we needed such multicentral study. And yoga was uh, uh, given to half the people and the half were the, the usual methods. Even after three months, it was shown that yoga could reduce the occurrence of hypertension uh, of uh, diabetes. In pre-diabetic, 47% decrease uh, in the uh, uh, new onset diabetes. So yoga is so powerful that it can decrease the occurrence of hypertension by uh, uh, the occurrence of diabetes mellitus by 47%. So it could be used extremely uh, well uh, for uh, uh, risk reduction in diabetes uh, mellitus. So extremely good. And also it was seen that some people became completely free of diabetes. In 52%, there was no diabetes, sign of diabetes at all left as against 39%. And therefore, even a short-term yoga has been shown to prevent diabetes. So I think this is a very important information. We are really at crossroads how to uh, control diabetes. The drugs, etc., are costly and not available. But uh, this is a very useful, just like for hypertension, this could be very useful. So these two main diseases, like hypertension and diabetes, could uh, be controlled by this. This is what the data shows. Next. Obesity is another uh, uh, risk factor now, and this incidence is increasing, especially in the developing countries. Next, there are several small studies which show that uh, uh, the yoga may reduce the body mass index. And there is, a, again, a consistent uh, uh, decrease in the body mass index. Apart from that, there are other uses also, like the, the waist circumflex, the central obesity is also reduced, and there is a reduction in cholesterol and so on and so forth. So it could be useful, although more studies are needed in reduction of BMI. Next, please. Another disease which is very common in our country called metabolic syndrome. We may not be overweight. Our BMI may not be very high, but we have this central obesity with certain other risk factors like dyslipidemia, blood pressure, etc. There are a few studies done in metabolic syndrome, including our own study, which I will tell you in details, which have again shown that uh, uh, these uh, various factors of metabolic syndrome like blood pressure, salivary cortisol, etc., and insulin resistance may be improved. Next, please. So, yoga has been found to be useful uh, in uh, many uh, components of metabolic syndrome. Next, again, smoking is a very important risk factor. All of you are aware. Next, please. Now, smoking not only of cigarettes, BDs, but uh, even of the uh, non-inhaled uh, things like uh, gutka, etc. is important risk factor. We all know that. Even secondary uh, smoke is uh, important uh, for causation of the disease. And it's difficult to quit smoking because people start smoking again. Now, there are few studies done uh, on yoga for relief of quitting of smoking. It has been shown that it is possible to quit smoking. Again, studies are small and we need long-term studies, but it seems to be very powerful. And the reason is very simple. Because uh, uh, two studies have shown the uh, functional MRI imaging, they have shown those areas where uh, the mind becomes strong uh, are improved and where uh, uh, you can make up your mind to quit smoking or increase. And therefore, yoga seems to be very potentially useful in quitting smoking also. It could be tried. It has been also used in quitting of uh, alcohol and other drugs also. Next, please. Lipids are important risk factor for heart disease. Next. And we know that they can be reduced by exercise, diet, etc. But yoga independently also has been shown in several small studies that it may decrease again modestly uh, the LDL, the bad cholesterol, triglycerides and increase the good cholesterol called the HDL. These studies of course are small and more studies are needed but it appears that uh, yoga could be uh, important in reducing the lipids and you can see how it can do that that is, uh, during stress, we have increase in the uh, cortisol, which can affect the lipids. And therefore, if we can control stress, these things may be improved. Next. Now, this is uh, our study, which we uh, uh, did 
yoga for reversal of heart disease as you know uh, once the heart disease developed can it be reversed there are two types of heart disease one is a heart disease as i said a person gets just uh, some blockages which are small and the arteries get thickened it is possible to reverse that ne next please and that happens in this condition called metabolic syndrome as i said this is a very common disease affecting about 50 to 60% of indians according to some studies we did a randomized study in 100 patients who were having metabolic syndrome they were not having any symptoms at all only thing they had central obesity some increase in blood pressure and lipids etc and they were asymptomatic but when we studied them we found that they had thickening of the uh, carotid artery intimal carotid and then half of them we gave yoga for a year others we controlled them with the usual therapy next at the end of one year what we found is that the carotid intimal medial thickness which is a surrogate marker of atherosclerosis decreased significantly in the yoga group and uh, this indicating that early atherosclerosis can be reversed by yoga this is a very important observation not shown by anybody earlier this has been published in one of the leading uh, american journals that yoga can reverse early atherosclerosis which is very important which is very common in our countries because atherosclerosis takes a long time to develop we can reverse it nothing like that next please the same study showed that the other uh, uh, secondary parameters which are very common in uh, uh, metabolic syndrome like body mass index the waist circumference the uh, hdl the uh, systolic blood pressure ldr were also significantly altered so yoga can um, have a significant effect in uh, metabolic syndrome as i said it can also uh, change the insulin resistance which has been shown in several other studies next please what about advanced atherosclerosis and this is a study there are three studies available as you heard dean ornish was the pioneer in 1990 although we did not call it yoga we call it as a intensive lifestyle but uh, we did a study uh, in which um, there were more blockages than dr dean ornish dean ornish had blockage of 40% we had for the first time 70 to 90% and there is a third, third trial which is raj yoga different types of yogic techniques but the results are the same these studies were done for about a year or so next and these are the results without going to details uh, all these uh, studies showed that there is a change in uh, body mass index the cholesterol did decrease many of these studies did not use statins angina decreased and many of our patients had uh, normal thallium tests on angiography uh, there was a regression regression was small 5 to 10% but at least the disease did not increase in majority and the psychosocial stress was very important that uh, they had uh, less of the stress and uh, so we found in this study and these three studies have clearly shown that the angina could be reduced and there can be a decrease of the blockages and the compliance was more than 80% as i said Uh, patients really uh, do not follow the drugs because they think there are side effects and all we found that here the drug compliance was better not only drug compliance but also the follow up of the lifestyle like the diet exercise quitting tobacco was much higher and the reason is very simple because i think the mind uh, becomes strong and once the mind becomes strong you have control of whatever you are doing and therefore this is a very important observation that this is important for uh, a good compliance of lifestyle and drugs next this is our study reported several years back and as dr hk chopra was uh, mentioning this i would like to mention this was several years old study but we took patients uh, 50 patients who had uh, uh, heart disease by angiography they had blockages of more than 70% next half of them we asked to do yoga for a year or so uh, it was done in a center in delhi adhyatmik sadhana kot and we showed that there was a regression in about 20% regression means more than 10% decrease in the uh, coronary stenosis by angiography and this is a very significant this has not been shown earlier and you can regress so much by any other techniques now of course some medicines are there like statin which can decrease slightly but at that time nothing was available so if we combine the statin the reduction will be much more and the progression of the disease was halted in uh, most of these patients next the need for revascularization was markedly reduced in the yoga group as you can see here and the reason we think is that we are able to stabilize the unstable plaque you know it is uh, not the blockages which really cause heart attack it is the uh, plaque which is rich in uh, fat which is thin 
endothelial layer, we can cause this. And therefore, we think that although the reduction and blockage is only 5-10%, but there is a marked reduction in the uh, heart attacks. And this is possibly because we are stabilizing the block. Next. This was a short study of one year. We did not have any clinical parameters. So when we continue yoga for a longer period of time, what happens? There are not many studies available. This is one study which is available from the United States using meditation. Next, please. For about 5.4 years, up till 9 years, they followed this study. These are half the patients were given uh, health education and others half were given transcendental meditation and followed for a long period of time. Uh, and uh, they showed that there is a almost a 50% reduction in the uh, new heart attacks uh, or strokes and deaths. So this is for the first time, well, the one study could show that yoga, if you do for a long period after heart attacks in a patient who has uh, blockage in the arteries, it could reduce significantly. Next. Then yoga can also be useful in uh, cardiac arrhythmias. This is a paper which has come in one of the top uh, 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 cardiac journals, uh, Journal of American College of Cardiology, American study in which it was shown that atrial fibrillation, which is a very common arrhythmia and it can cause strokes and it's very disabling and very difficult to treat. Its incidence is also increasing. It can be controlled in paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Next, please. This is a study which was reported uh, some years back. Again, you can see that both uh, uh, improvement in the manifest atrial fibrillation as well as uh, uh, silent atrial fibrillation was significantly reduced, as well as the quality of life stress was markedly reduced. Similar data has been shown in ventricle ectopics. Actually, there's a study which shows that ICD people who get uh, uh, implantable cardiac uh, defibrillator, they have a lot of stress and their uh, uh, chances of getting these shocks are increased when there's stress. So in one of the studies, they showed that the shocks are markedly reduced because it can uh, uh, yoga can decrease stress and decrease the ventricle fibrillation. Next. So it has a lot of potentiality in arrhythmias. Uh, yoga and cardiac rehabilitation. Uh, yoga improves the, as I said, uh, physical and mental uh, well-being and therefore could be ideally used. And uh, some studies are there. Next. And uh, this is a uh, randomized study again from India of 250 patients who had bypass and they were followed for uh, almost five years. It was shown that their uh, various uh, uh, blood parameters like uh, sugar, lipids, etc. markedly improved. Even ejection fracture improved. And also they had improved quality of life and there was an accident compliance. Next. But this is the largest ever study. I think this is one study which is going to change the our clinical practice in the near future. Again, from India. The largest study ever done on cardiac rehabilitation. It's called Yoga Care Trial. It's recently been published. I was a part of this study. And this was done in 26 centers in India on 4,000 patients who had heart attacks and angioplasty. And they were followed either uh, with uh, uh, yoga uh, for 22 months, almost two years, and others were given the conventional therapy. Next. This study, uh, as I said, the largest ever study done from India has been published in uh, JAC, the Journal of American College of Cardiology, only last month. And this has uh, received very high editorial comments. They said this is one of the best cost-effective strategies. Next. So what uh, was shown in this study is that uh, there was the improved quality of life. The return to work was much better. And the primary parameters, which were the primary endpoints, which were the recurrence of myocardial infarction or stroke or death was also reduced, as you can see. Uh, after a period of 22 months, but did not achieve statistical significance. And the reason is because the amount of, uh, 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 the amount of uh, uh, side effects, uh, side events were much less as we expected. But as you can say, the curves are diverging. And once we follow it for a longer period of time, it may be significant. Next, in the same study, uh, it was shown that people who could uh, do yoga, because as you shown, the compliance of yoga is not 100%. And those people who did more than normal yoga or uh, those who were high compliant of yoga, there was a significant reduce in the second heart attack, strokes, and deaths. So for the first time, we are showing this uh, technique can be very useful. It was very safe. There were no side effects and all. So this huge study, I think, is going to change the outlook because cardiac rehabilitation is very useful. 
it can decrease the mortality improve the quality of life after a patient gets a heart attack but it is not utilized because it's very costly even in the developed countries the compliance is very low and therefore this article has received huge comments from all the top cardiologists suggesting that this could be a very useful technique for uh, rehabilitation of patients after uh, heart attack as i said this is the only study which is done in 26 centers using the same methodology yeah. next please what about heart failure heart failure is another serious complication and it has been shown few studies have shown that uh, yoga can improve ejection fraction the oxygen consumption and quality of life and there is a huge study which has been sanctioned by icmr recently and this will again like a yoga care trial will be done in large number of centers and hopefully uh, this could also have positive results so it could be very useful in heart failure also actually uh, it should be very useful because depression after heart failure increases the mortality at least 50% and therefore already small studies have shown that it could be useful for improving quality and even ejection fraction and also changing the uh, uh, in parameters like uh, nt proof b and b etc next now what is the mechanism of this yoga it has been studied very extensively and uh, 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 functional mri imaging have been done it has been sh shown that during meditation uh, those areas where concentration is there those areas are activated markedly and areas where uh, the self is there anger is there they are uh, reduced it has also been shown that the connections between the two ventricles become more balanced and even uh, the brain has been shown to be increase in size those areas like frontal lobe where attention etc is there have been shown to increase in size it was considered brain cannot grow but yoga has been shown to increase the size of the brain as well as the connections next number of studies are available other mechanisms also it, it has been shown to reduce inflammatory markers as shown by decrease in the interleukin 6 crp and tnf alpha and improve the adenopectin in, in indicating endothelial function now inflammatory markers are responsible for heart disease they are also responsible as you heard for covid also and therefore yoga could be useful in that condition of course yoga has is being tried now uh, because it can control stress and it may also uh, improve the uh, inflammatory markers and uh, also increase the uh, endothelial function which is responsible for heart disease and several other diseases and all so this has been shown in several studies it has also been shown to exacerbate stress and improve prolonged status this means the clots will not occur all those studies are small it has been shown to change the gene expression uh, only in 3 months because uh, several genes can be turned off Uh, by several studies are there dean ornish did this study and it showed that in carcinoma of uh, prostate 23 genes could be turned off so in other words the gene expression can be suppressed by yoga it also has been shown to increase the telomere enzyme indicating uh, that uh, the aging process can be halted by this next next please this was done by the nobel laureate dr blackburn yoga has also been shown to uh, decrease the psychosocial stress which could also decrease the mortality as i said after myocardial infarction etc the yoga may reduce also uh, the stress response uh, by increasing the activity of the paranormal system and gaba and therefore uh, original homeostasis will be restored also it has been shown next to act through uh, another pathway four pathways are there as i said it's opposite of uh, stress when we do yoga there is the pathway first is the pathway that uh, it decreases the activity of the hypophysic pituitary axis hpa which was uh, increased during stress and uh, therefore the effect of that is that there is a decrease in many neuro hormones even behavior is changed and inflammation is changed the second pathway is that uh, the autonomic nervous system is changed there is increase in the parasympathetic activity the baroreceptor activity is also improved and our variability is also improved so this can have significant effect in arrhythmias and several diseases like heart failure etc they interact in a complicated manner ultimately they can decrease the uh, inflammatory markers the stress and reduce it there are two other factors for example as i said there is a change in the brain structure as i said certain areas of the brain become hypertrophied and uh, the function there are transmitters which are increased like i showed you the gaba and uh, serotonin etc the fourth factor could be yoga is considered as a mild exercise 
uh, and mild exercise has left several benefits, all of you know. So all these four combine and they may decrease the heart disease. Next, please. There are limitations. Although there are several studies I have shown you that uh, they are useful for secondary and primary prevention, but they are mostly single center. However, new studies are coming up like you saw in diabetes and uh, in uh, rehabilitation and they may change our outlook, but more studies are needed and not only in cardiology, but in other specialties. Next. So to conclude, yoga is a holistic mind-body technique, appears extremely promising for primary and secondary prevention of heart disease. Reported studies have several limitations. Large multicenter trials with improved methodology are needed. Already they are happening from India. And uh, however, yoga being a simple cost-effective technique without side effects could be incorporated as a complementary technique for prevention of heart disease. And I am sure that uh, uh, this will convince you that this is a very safe and effective technique. Anybody can do it, as I said, 70, 80. Us, our doctors are also under stress, and now it's being tried in COVID patients also. It may be helpful in increasing immunity. There are a lot of studies to show, and therefore, uh, the prevention of uh, COVID-19 may be there. And similarly, it could also uh, increase the recovery, as has been shown in patients who get uh, uh, heart disease and they recover first. Next, please. So, thank you very much. And yoga, as you know, is becoming popular throughout the world because of our Prime Minister five years back, International Day of Yoga was accepted by the World Health Assembly. And people are doing it all over the world. But uh, you, must, uh, you must be convinced now that it could be used as a method which is uh, useful alone in primary prevention and it is useful with uh, the drugs in the secondary prevention of heart disease. So I would suggest that uh, patients to prevent heart disease must uh, follow this thing. Not only heart disease, but other uh, conditions also like diabetes, obesity, which are hitting us and the mental stress, which is increased markedly these days. There is no better method than yoga. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manchanda, for your most lucid presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard Dr. Manchanda. He said, there is your phenotype is your genotype. And this can be regulated by perfect yoga on a daily basis. If you want to tame your genes, if you want to pacify your genes so that they don't erect or express into a disease anywhere in the body, please do yoga. And he has shown a huge scientific data. I'm very happy to see Dr. Manchanda is talking. When we were students in a medical college, we were only taught physiology and anatomy. What Dr. Manchanda has just mentioned, that we are expression of three bodies, the physical body, the subtle body, and the causal body. So if somebody asks, who are we? So don't say we are only anatomy or only physiology. He said, we are three bodies, physical body, energy body, the subtle body, which is mind, body, and intellect, which is a transformation field. And he also mentioned that there is something like a causal body. Causal body means cause and effect. And that is soul and spirit and one. So what is yoga? He mentioned very rightly. Yoga is basically integration of mind, body, soul, spirit, and environment. What a beautiful expression is given. And Dr. Manchanda also said, everything in you and me is variable. Nothing is fixed. Whether it's the blood pressure or cholesterol or sugar or heart rate, all are variable. Very good knowledge. And he also said, we can block our coronary arteries and we can unblock them too. Beautiful expression. The data is there. You've seen the data right from the beginning. He mentioned about the blood pressure. He mentioned about the diabetes. He mentioned about obesity. He mentioned about metabolic syndrome. He mentioned about the atrial fibrillation, arrhythmias, prevention, regression, reversal of heart disease. Everything beautifully covered by Dr. Manchanda. I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, what he mentioned is we must get a message as allopathic doctors that we are not human beings with a spiritual experience. But we are spiritual beings 
with the occasional human experience. It's a very beautiful expression given by Dr. Manchanda. Dr. Manchanda also said that you and me are the hologram of the whole universe and the universe is our hologram. Every atom in you and me, every proton in you and me change from time to time. If you want this change to happen, good for our self and the self of the self, please do yoga. It is required for a total health. And he used the men, he used the nomenclature. It's a poly pill. What do you mean by poly pill? Poly, many, and pill, because he considered all the eight limbs of yoga. Whether it's a yama, do's and don'ts, nima, self-discipline, asana, postures, pranayam, breathing exercises, and then he mentioned about contemplation, dhyana, meditation, dharna, and samadhi. Every aspect has been beautifully covered and scientifically validated. I must tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, I have yet to hear a huge discourse for the last 50 minutes on yoga in a scientific mention. He also said, as is the atom, so is the universe. As is the microcosm, so is the macrocosm. As is the universal body, so is the cosmic body. In other words, what he said is, Jatha Pinde, Tatha Brahmande. Ladies and gentlemen, you and me are big ocean, and there is a turbulence in the ocean of us all the time. To stabilize this turbulence, we need to do yoga so that we remain calm, cool, peaceful in a meditation mode and remain healthy all the time. A very nice message given by Dr. Manchanda and he used this as a smart CBD protection pill or a poly pill or so many things I think he mentioned which are great relevance to our country. I think uh, with this, we are open the session to the questions and answers because I think Dr. Manchanda has done a very lovely job giving the huge data over the last many years and his prediction for the future, which is going to be a very, very great that yoga is going to be a magic pill of the future. It's open for questions and discussions and I think there are many questions here. The first question is uh, uh, by uh, from Jalandar uh, and also from uh, Madurai, uh, Dr. Gopinath is asked, is yoga against non-vegetarian diet? Dr. Manchanda, is, no, it is. is non-vegetarian diet? <laughs> it, is, it is not really against that. You can follow the diet that you are taking, but it encourages what is called sattvic diet. Sattvic diet is a vegetarian diet, as you know, and there are advantages of vegetarian diet. There's no question about it. Vegetarian people have low heart disease as Seventh-day Adventist studies and so on and so forth. The vegetarian people have a lot of fiber. It reduces cholesterol. They have a lot of uh, phytochemicals which can decrease cholesterol. and even So taking vegetarian diet can decrease heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, and even uh, 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 cancer. And therefore, it's much better to be vegetarian. Now, the other reason for being vegetarian is you save this planet and all. Once you are doing yoga, you see, you take look after everything in this world, not only the human being, but also the animals and the environment and all. So although it does not uh, say that we should take vegetarian, but I would think that the sattvic diet is one we should take. We have no reason to kill animals uh, uh, and eat them. And they are disadvantages anyhow for our uh, health also. So although it does not, there are many people who are doing yoga in the Western countries. They take a small amount, but I have seen more and more people doing yoga, they become vegetarian themselves. But it's good to be vegetarian. That's what I would say. It doesn't, uh, there's nothing hard and fast in yoga. You can uh, follow your normal lifestyle and still do yoga. There's no problem. Another question is Dr. Banchanda. And the question is after angioplasty or bypass surgery, when do you recommend patients should go in your rehabilitation program for yoga? What is the earliest or the latest time recommendation for yoga? Dr. Manchanda, sir. Yes, if you see our study, which is just published in Jack, all these points have been completely clearly mentioned. These were patients who had heart attacks. They had an angioplasty done. 
and then before discharge on third day, they were just uh, uh, given a, a theoretical discussion about uh, what yoga etc is. Then uh, at 15 days, again a little theoretical discussion. At one month after angioplasty and three months after, by, there's a uh, study of uh, bypass surgery also, three months after bypass surgery, uh, it can be done in full. But uh, one month after the myocardial infarction, we did in 26 centers and found the results are extremely good. Nice, Dr. There's another question. And it's a very good question that what is the difference between playing any game for one hour daily or yoga for one hour? Is there a difference or there's no difference? There's a lot of difference. You see, yoga is not a physical exercise, although there is a mild exercise in this. But yoga can be done for years together. For example, Lord Mahavir, Lord Buddha did meditation for years together. Because for every poster, there's a counter poster. Exercise burns your calories. Also extremely good. I'm not saying exercise is bad. Extremely good. We know the benefits of exercise. But exercise, you cannot do it for a long period of time. Exercise is very good for the body, physical body. But yoga is very good not only for the body, but also the mind and consciousness. It looks after all the three. So exercise, as I said, is a part of yoga. It's a physical component of yoga. You take the sattvic diet. If uh, a good diet, you should do exercise. You should not... Uh, take tobacco and alcohol. So exercise is uh, different than yoga and yoga is not a religious activity. I must tell you that yoga is just your lifestyle. It's a holistic lifestyle. Anybody can follow. It's neither religion nor physical exercise. You should do physical exercise. I'm not against it at all. But uh, uh, yoga is not physical exercise. This is for the mind and uh, for the body. Extremely good uh, exercise is good. The next question, Dr. Manchandna, follows in the same way. It says, how is mindfulness important for cardiac health? You just mentioned about it, but just elaborate a little more on mindfulness yeah. and cardiac health. You see, there are, I said, uh, several types of meditations. The most important these days are, uh, the, uh, which is most popular in the United States, called mindfulness meditation, mindful uh, relaxation. Now, this is pay attention to whatever you are doing. You see, our mind is somewhere else, we are somewhere else. And this, uh, as I said, it uh, creates a mind-body union. Normally, we are uh, our mind is somewhere else. For example, I see some of my friends going for a walk. They want to come back home because they want to have breakfast. When they're taking breakfast, their mind is to go to the office. And when they're in the office, they want to come back. So your mind and body should be at the same place. And this gives you a very good mind uh, uh, sort of a body uh, relationship. And this is what mindfulness is. Whatever you're doing, you're while walking, while breathing, while eating, while uh, uh, doing anything, even uh, your office, if your mind is there where you are, the, you will always relax. Even if you get angry, your mind should be there. So it has been shown that this mindfulness meditation, whatever you do, can uh, is a very good type of meditation. A huge number of studies are there, control of hypertension, stress, and so on and so forth. So this is the type of meditation. But every meditation is mindfulness. You should be aware of what you are doing. For example, meditation need not be done only for an hour. It can be done 24 hours. For example, you're talking to somebody. If somebody criticizes you, you don't get angry. That is also yoga. When you are sitting in the office, you're sitting straight and breathing uh, uh, properly. That is also yoga. You're sitting in a comfortable posture. That is also yoga. So yogic attitude or meditative attitude should be there. And mindfulness is a very important component of this meditation. I think Dr. Manchandra has given a very important point that when we pray to God, you try to talk to God. And when you're in meditation mood, God talks to you. It's a very important message. Mindfulness is the need of the hour. Another question has come from Lucknow, Dr. Rajneesh Kumar. He asked, Dr. Manchandra, sir, what is the technique of meditation which was taught by Bhagwan Gautam Buddha to spread the message of peace and harmony? Because we see a lot of turmoil in the world today. <laughs> yes, I think... Uh what uh, uh, Lord Buddha said or other people said, this is a very uh, good type of meditation. He preached this so-called mindfulness meditation or this Zen meditation which is there. You should be aware of your breath, etc. and so on and so forth. The moment you do it, you see you feel relaxed. The whole world is in turmoil because we are going against the teachings of Buddha or uh, Lord Mahavira or the other uh, spiritual masters who have taught us all this. And it has been very clearly shown even in the uh, jails meditation have been taught and it can change the behavior, the mind of the individual. 
so what i suggest is what many yoga uh, practitioners have advocated that if 1% of the population does yoga there will be world peace not only you will eradicate the disease you will also eradicate terrorism because it's all negative mindset which is really uh, uh, letting us do nothing at all and we have no control of ourselves actually the uh, uh, anger is in our control we are not uh, control of anger so i think if one can do meditation there can be not only uh, you can be free from the disease you will keep the uh, whole world peaceful not only you will keep the world peaceful you will see that environmentally also it's very healthy because yoga takes care of not only the human beings also the animals and the planet and all that thing you know the global warming etc which is occurring could be reduced by yoga this is the prediction of many people so ladies and gentlemen dr manchanda has given a very nice message and burn your anger before it burns you he shown the data one fit of anger can cause a massive heart attack so i think if you really want that you should be anger free we should be all the time in a parasympathetic mode all data has been shown by dr manchanda never been a sympathetic mode the time you come in sympathetic mode you disturb your catecholamines and we produce the tachycardia high blood pressure and cause a heart attack and if you are in a parasympathetic mode you liberate nice happy molecules within you you use the word serotonin you use the word acetylcholine you use the word oxytocin you use the word endorphins all are to a high levels happy molecules and not the jittery molecules so very very important message so burn your anger be kind kindness is the only thing by which you can win the world and i think you mentioned attitude of gratitude is the real attitude and a real attitude which is possible only by yoga and meditation one more question is asked is there a particular age to practice yoga or one can start right from childhood and go till the genetic age group dr manchanda sir yes it should be a part of our lifestyle from early childhood as you know that most of the diseases really start in early childhood all these lifestyle related diseases heart disease for example has starts from the age of 10 years and obesity etc etc and uh, it seems that we should be doing it in, in children now there are lots of studies done in children especially in united states they have shown that the children uh, once they are uh, uh, taught this yoga they uh, 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 they do not get uh, stressed during the examination and all their habits also improve for example they stop smoking they don't get angry and all and they have a friendly atmosphere so it's extremely useful for children also and there's lots of classes being held for them it's very good for the young people executives who don't have any disease you know we have seen executives bpos who are working at night they have tremendous stress and they have lot of heart disease and so on it should be done when you are little elderly and you have uh, pre clinical disease for example pre diabetes slightly obesity without any medicine you can cure your uh, early blood pressure early diabetes and if you have of course any disease then also you should combine it in other words i think yoga should be universally practiced and i would suggest that from school age till the age we die we always have uh, uh, we should be doing yoga because we remain calm and peaceful that is the whole purpose we remain happy we are looking happiness outside happiness is right inside us it has been shown people who uh, do meditation they are eternally happy the, our happiness is dependent on external factors if i get a car i am very happy if the car has an accident i am unhappy but if i look internally the happiness is eternal that's called bliss this means it's not affected by the external factors and the, the doctors should do it and it has been shown by many doctors that their creativity increases your calm you know that the creativity increases there are many uh, there is a bypass surgeon uh, there is trans cardiac transplant is you want two or three new techniques and all if you are calm you become more creative not only that you become Uh, the whole society becomes peaceful your family becomes peaceful and the whole world can become peaceful but you should do it the doctors should do it there are a lot of burnout we did a study in nurses in our hospital and found that 70% of the nurses have burnout and doctors now have huge burnout especially and uh, especially during the covid time and if that burnout can be significantly decreased our whole biochemistry changes once we do this yoga very important message ladies and gentlemen by dr manchanda he said most of us including you and me are busy busy and busy in earning money and losing our health a time has come we need to change and because then we are busy busy and busy in losing that money and trying to earn health it is gone 
a very nice message given by Dr. Manchanda. Please take care of your health. He says, health is wealth. Health is not in the money. He also said, health is not in the gold. Health is not in the silver. Health is not in the piles of paper notes. Health is in your own hand. And that is yoga. It's a very beautiful expression by Dr. Manchanda. And he also says, kindness in words, create confidence. Kindness in thinking, create profoundness. Kindness in giving, creates love. And kindness in loving, creates happiness. Where is the money here? He said, it's yoga. Yoga will teach you humanity, humility, and a real way of life. He has told repeatedly, yoga is the way of life. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I must say today that health of millions is at stake in India and in the world. As you learned from Dr. Machanda, with hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, CVD, stroke, obesity, the only practice of yoga will help you. Medication will not help you. Dr. Manchanda mentioned that meditation is thousand times superior than medication. We are all allopathic doctors. We are not condemning medication. Don't misunderstand. Medication have its own role. But if you practice meditation, you may not require many medicines. And if you require medicines, your compliance will improve, your adherence will improve, the effect of medicines will improve. So please don't misunderstand. The meditation is different or medication is different. It's not like that. We have to work in synergy. And synergy is the game. That's how we lead a very, very good life. In last, ladies and gentlemen, I remember the words of Albert Einstein, who once said, we are not physical body with wisps of memory and desire. We are all the web of information and energy interwoven with the emotion and intelligence from the eye of the soul. That's what Dr. Manchanda has mentioned. That our of the health of the heart should be a consciousness based, which is possible only by practice of yoga. Dr. Manchanda also mentioned that yoga is life and life is yoga. To give a concluding remark, I must tell you, which I always quote and Dr. Manchanda heard many times. I must say, as is the quantum soup, so is the quartz. And as is the quark, so is the boson. And as is the boson, so is the proton. As is the proton, so is the neutron. And as is the neutron, so is the electron. And as are the proton, neutron, and electron, so is the DNA. And as is the DNA, so is the intelligence. And as is the intelligence, so is the perception. As is the perception, so is the thought. As is the thought, so is the interpretation. As is the interpretation, so is the choice. And as is the choice, so is the mind. As is the mind, so is the body. And as are the mind and the body, so are the practice of yoga. And as is the yoga and meditation, so is your total health. And as is the total health, so is the world around you. Beautiful message. Dr. Manchanda said that yoga does not act only at the physical body, which you and me have been taught. It acts at the level of subtle body, causal body, even at the level of the atoms. He used one more word. I listened to him very carefully. Not only at atoms, at the level of genes. So your genotype is your phenotype. Please do not allow your gene to become aggressive, volatile, and turbulent. Please allow them to work in harmony with the internal environment and external environment. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of you, I express my gratitude and thanks from the bottom of my heart for the great soul, Dr. S.C. Manchanda, who is a dyan of cardiology, who was a teacher, and he is the teacher of teachers in all India Institute of Medical Sciences, most prestigious institute, a researcher, a author, 
and also an orator, I think he gave a very beautiful expression of every possible thing can be achieved by yoga. Please practice yoga. It is not a gimmick. It is a hundred percent scientific. Is if it's understood scientifically. And we had a very good discussion today. And I think on behalf of each one of you, I express my gratitude and thanks to Professor Simon Chanda. I also express my gratitude and thanks to two important people from IPCA who really worked very hard. Dr. John, Mr. Johnny Edwin, who is the vice president of IPCA. It was his idea. He came to me that we must do this. And I think the topic decided was CVD protection and yoga connect. Beautiful idea. I'm also very grateful to Sachin Nayar, who is really a very, very good guy in structuring the invitation program, the designing the whole program, the artwork, I think beautifully done. In short, I express my gratitude to the whole team of IPTA for the first time taking up this challenge and showing the world there is something beyond drugs. And I think that is your work. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Once again, I express my gratitude to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for your valuable time and your uh, presence, Dr. H.K. Chopra and Dr. Professor Dr. Manchanda for their valuable insight given. It was a very, very useful program for, uh, of course, all the participants. And uh, we had a lot of questions coming up due to lack of time. We have just uh, not able to address it, sir. So we request you maybe if we could answer those questions and send the doctor separately, that would be of a great help as we have got the contact number of all the doctors as well. So that request. It'll yes. be a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you. To thank, you. Sir, and thank you, Johnny. We are grateful to you. Thank and you. all the other doctors. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well done. Excellent job, as usual. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. All well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I phone came, Vikram Singh came, it happened, air conditioner came, no, the car came, the mobile 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 came, Thank you, HK. You did a great job. Sir, he's trying for your number, I believe. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs>